Hey there, everybody. Today we are going to be talking about the three types of two-way players. We're going to be starting with uh, this year's version of Shohei Otani, moving on to last year's version of Shohei Otani, and then we're going to go on to a modified version of Michael Lorenzen. So let's start with this year's Shohei Otani. And we're going to go into the ratings page. Now, as you can see, he has both ratings as a starting pitcher and as a right fielder. His defense in right field is acceptable, and generally speaking, this would be one of the better right fielders in the league by itself. He's got good base running all around. He's an effective player. Now, as a starting pitcher, he has high stuff, decent movement, but very low control. Overall, he's probably a little bit questionable to use as a starting pitcher. On a good team, you probably wouldn't be using him in that role. So the question is, how should he be used? And it's actually quite a simple answer. He should be a right fielder exclusively, unless your team is very desperate for starting pitching help. And this is a lot of how two-way players are actually going to be ended up using. You're going to use them exclusively as a pitcher or exclusively as a hitter 90% of the time. And the reason for this is simple. Shohei Otani may be a number five starting pitcher on a good or on a mediocre team, I should say. He's not even going to be in your rotation on a good team. When he pitches, he's not going to add you too much value. And when he pitches, he's not going to be able to hit. It's going to be two days, one day for him obviously pitching and one day for him resting before he can return to your starting lineup. And uh, he is very effective as a right fielder. You want him in your lineup as much as you possibly can to get those very solid hitting ratings, really solid base running, and if you're going to use him in the field, not too bad defense out there. So yeah, the value of Shohei Otani as a hitter in this case is so much that it's really just not worth using him as a starting pitcher. Now we're going to go on to last year's version of Shohei Otani. Uh, now, this Shohei Otani was a much better pitcher, and this isn't actually exactly what he looked like last year, but it's close. Uh, he had better defense, he was a better hitter slightly, but the main thing to keep in mind here is that his pitching ratings are much better. He's the type of player who's going to be towards the top of the rotation on just about any team. So how do you deploy him? Uh, you are going to, in fact, use him as a two-way player. He's going to be in both your starting rotation and your starting lineup. So let's figure out how we're going to balance that out. Now, essentially what we're going to do here is we've got him set as a starting pitcher. We want to go to set game strategy. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of the pitching side, use as a two-way player. We want to make sure this is selected or he's not going to be used as a two-way player. So now we're going to put him in our starting rotation. Let's just take a quick look here uh, and decide who we're going to remove. It's probably going to be Shohei Otani. Actually, he's not the worst pitcher here. Uh, Jose Quintana is probably the worst pitcher in our rotations. So we're going to pull him from the rotation, set Shohei Otani in here, and we're going to move him to the top because he is almost certainly the best pitcher in our rotation right now. And now we're going to add him to our lineup as well. Uh, Justin Upton, not very good. We'll pull him out, and Shohei Otani will step in as our starting left fielder. So... Uh, the AI will automatically put Shohei Otani in the lineup when he's not tired, and it's going to automatically put him into the rotation when it's his turn to pitch. You do not have to worry about changing anything strategically to make sure that it uses him correctly. Now, what you do want to do is make sure that Shohei Otani is actually only playing when he is rested or he's just not going to be effective. He's going to be at a massive injury risk. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go set game strategy, Override team strategy. You're going to want to set the strategy sliders individually uh, if you are willing to put in the time to do so. And you want to set bench one fatigue percentage as a hitter to 97%. You do not want Shohei Otani to be playing if he's tired. Now, I recommend doing this with all of your players. It'll help limit your injury risk a little bit and it'll make sure that you have your players out there at their most effective. Now we're going to go down to the pitching side and bench one fatigue percentage. You're going to set this to 92%. It's going to be a little bit lower because this can fluctuate a little bit more and you definitely don't want your other pitchers pitching when they're at much lower percentages, which is generally what will happen if you have a player playing uh, when they are or a player benched when they are the most rested pitcher on your team. Uh, you're also going to want to hit the aggressive tiredness hook. Generally, I recommend doing this for all of your starting pitchers as well and all of your relief pitchers. Uh, but you especially want to do it with your two-way players. This is going to make sure that they are not out there longer than they should be. They're not at a higher injury risk, and they are going to be a little bit better rested when they go out there as a hitter. 
So again, this Shohei Otani, he's probably going to be playing about 100 games in the outfield and starting close to 30 games in your rotation. Now, another thing you have to consider here is because he's only starting about 100 games as your right fielder, that means whoever your utility outfielder is, they're going to be starting 60 games in left field, in addition to however many games they play as a replacement center fielder or right fielder. Uh, in other words, your utility outfielder is getting into about half of the games you're playing, so you want to make sure it's somebody good. Now, in this case, Jared Walsh is our utility outfielder. His defense really isn't going to cut it. Uh, you want to get somebody more effective. Let's just take a quick look at the free agency list. We're going to want somebody with good range, so I'll filter by range. And we're going to want to make sure that we have somebody uh, who can hit at least a little bit. So you'd want to be picking up somebody like, uh, let's just pretend Eric Jenkins is fully developed. He'd probably be fine. Jay Charleston, probably not a good enough hitter. You'd want to maybe be training for somebody in this case. But again, because your utility outfielder is going to be playing so many games, if you are using a two-way player, it's going to be very important that they are good. Same if you're, uh, let's say Shohei Otani was like a second baseman or something. You'd want to make sure you've got a really good utility infielder for all those games that they're going to end up being played at second base, first base, and of course their normal backup games as well. So that is a factor to consider with a good utility player. And now for our last utility player that we're going to be covering, or two-way player that we're going to be covering today, Michael Lorenzen, modified version. So as you can see, he's a reasonably effective reliever. Uh, 70 stuff, 50 movement, 45 control. That's somebody who's probably going to be a middle reliever on your team. Uh, even if he was a little bit better, we'd probably be looking at him the same way. And he's got a decent amount of range, air, and arm in the outfield with mildly decent hitting ratings. He's probably good enough that you could argue that he could be a starter on some teams, but... Uh, for the sake of argument here, we're going to say we've got a really strong team and he's not good enough to be a starter. So how are you going to deploy him here? Uh, he is going to be your utility outfielder, so we'll just stick him into that role. First, we need to actually set him as a two-way player. Same thing with Shohei Otani that we did. We're going to go to strategy, scroll down to the bottom of the pitching side and hit use as a two-way player. Uh, and now we can stick him in as our utility outfielder. But we also want him to be used as a reliever. So we're just going to set his... We'll say we want to use him as a middle reliever. And this is pretty much how most of your two-way reliever backup guys are going to be used. Uh, they're going to be used as middle relievers or long relievers. So now the question is, how is Michael Lorenzen going to be used? Well, he's going to be coming in as a utility outfielder any day where you have a tired outfielder. So... Let's just pretend that Otani is not a two-way player for this point, because generally speaking, it's going to be very rare that you have both types on your team. Uh, so if Otani, Trout, or Fowler is tired, just normally, Lorenzen's going to come in. He'll play probably about 50 to 60 games in the outfield. And when he's not in the outfield, he's going to be eligible to be used as a relief pitcher. So this is essentially getting a little bit of extra utility out of your utility outfielder. They're also... Uh, going to be able to come and help you as a reliever. The AI will do this automatically when Lorenzen's coming in to start in the outfield because somebody is tired. He will do that automatically, and when he's not, he will be eligible to be used as a reliever. Uh, essentially, all you're going to need to do here is make sure that his uh, Fatigue percentages are set as well. We want to set this to probably about 90%. Eh, we'll, we'll say 80%. That's the absolute minimum that you could get. And 97. No, actually, 90% as an outfielder. We want to make sure our starters are getting the rest they need. Generally speaking, these two-way players like Lorenzen are going to be relatively valuable. Uh, their use is essentially going to be taking up that extra role in your bullpen, being able to give you a few extra innings while also fulfilling their role as a utility outfielder. So it's a better use of a singular roster spot. Uh, the players like Otani, they can kind of save you a roster spot by being able to start as both a pitcher and a right fielder. But again, they put that extra emphasis on your utility outfielder and you may need to bring in an extra hitter in order to compensate for the amount of time that they're going to spend as a pitcher. But of course, these do bring you extra roster spot value, and that is 
one of the primary benefits of using a two-way player, of course. So that's something you'll want to consider. However, if Michael Lorenzen was a full-time starter, you would not use him as a relief pitcher. And this is something I really want to emphasize. There are such a thing as two-way players who can be both starting pitchers and relief pitchers, like this version of Otani. But there is no such thing as a two-way player who can be both a start or a relief pitcher and a utility player. It's just not really possible. Uh, essentially, players are going to be starting ev almost every day. When they're too tired to start as a hitter, they're going to be too tired to pitch anyway. So there's no opportunity for them to come in as relief. If you have a player who is a starting player and has relief ratings, just use them as a starter or just use them as a reliever. And almost entirely, you're going to be using them as a hitter, not as a pitcher. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Just in general, two-way players are rarely going to be good enough both ways that they're worth using. And they're rarely going to be equal or close to as good at both things that they are worth using. The, these Otani-type players from last year, very, very rare. You're almost never going to actually be using a two-way player. You're usually going to be converting them to one spot full-time. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know about two-way players and how to use them. Just make sure you're getting the rest in. Just make sure that you're only using two-way players if they're actually worth using as two-way players. And whatever you do, do not two-way a player who is in your starting lineup as a reliever. That is just not going to work. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know, and I'll see you guys on the next video.